Thanks for tuning in to the Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Vakula, here to help you travel the world and next to no cost through credit card points, miles, benefits, and rewards. Make money, save money, and take advantage of great deals. Thanks for joining me for podcast episode 65, Dave Ramsey Misses the Point. I explain why Dave Ramsey's thoughts on credit cards are incredibly flawed and how Ramsey and his ardent followers miss out on tons of value with miles, points, cash back, hotel nights, flights, and much more. Dave Ramsey, self-stylized America's Voice on Money, encourages people to live a debt-free lifestyle, pay for purchases in full with cash, and cut up their credit cards. I can explain why much of his advice is terrible in many cases, but for the purposes of this episode, I'll mainly focus on Dave Ramsey's comments on credit cards. It's challenging to give an extremely charitable interpretation of Dave's comments because he literally yells at callers to his show, calling them deluded, and laments how they wouldn't become millionaires with miles and points because they'd have to spend $100,000 to get Discover Points worth $1,000. Ramsey shows, as I'll explain, that he really doesn't understand credit card reward programs. Ramsey has a dim view of human nature evidenced by him saying that even if we think we are responsible spenders who pay credit card bills in full to avoid interest, we're still overspending, even though we think we're not overspending. Dave calls you deluded, offering a personal example of how he doesn't remember how much he spent at a restaurant because he used a debit card. That's interesting news to me, one who embraces a frugal lifestyle, eating out with discounted gift cards, buy one get one deals, and almost always ordering ice water, rather than as I see it, lighting money on fire, buying soda. Quite often, I eat in casinos using comps I generate from, take a breather Dave, credit card spend, and I play in games where I have an edge, either over other players or the house. Most of my eating out is when I am away from home, because I can just prep food at home for breakfast and lunch, and I acquired those materials through the use of grocery reward programs, once again using credit cards and stacking deals. Thanks to credit cards and various promotions, I've paid next to nothing for gas and groceries on many occasions where the cost was dramatically discounted. It's bizarre a world with Dave Ramsey lamenting that he and others don't remember what they pay at the pump because they're using plastic rather than physical cash. This on Dave's account is evidence that you're going to overspend and not even realize it. But remembering what you paid probably doesn't matter because gas is essential for many. Additionally, as I mentioned, grocery reward programs can significantly discount your gas costs. And this is possible because of using credit to purchase gift cards in bulk. Imagine going into a grocery store and handing over thousands of dollars, hundred dollar bills maybe, to a cashier, missing out on 6% cash back from a card like the blue cash preferred or 4x points from Amex Gold, 6x from Hilton Surpass, or even a 2% cashback offered by many cards. And not just the 2-6 to six times here, but also progress toward high welcome bonuses and leveraging money for profit. Dave speaks of nothing of these welcome offers or the leveraging of money. I look for ways to save everywhere, and often tailor my travel and loyalty to where the deals are. I find it incredibly fun and rewarding to figure out how to win. Rather than being a hopeless consumer, Dave might think I am, as he literally yells, the borrower is a slave to the lender. While others might not be as frugal as me, I hope I can keep my frugal cred, Dave, using $10 CVS Care Pass rewards and gift cards buying salads and sandwiches at the glorious CVS in Las Vegas next to Bally's, but people are living a good lifestyle, paying off their bills and not hopelessly getting into credit card debt. I set aside maybe 30-45 minutes a week to log into my credit card and checking accounts, mainly to make sure payments are made and no fraudulent activity is occurring. I'll listen to YouTube videos or podcasts during that time, no big deal. We as adults must pay bills and check our accounts. Since late 2018, I've been traveling on the regular and next to no cost, countering Dave's narrative of credit card rewards not being worth the effort. And no, I didn't put all of my spend on a Discover card. I'm opening many cards to get large welcome bonuses, lucrative travel benefits, and bonus spending categories that make a difference when I can scale deals. Not only is my travel next to no cost, it's elevated with airline seat upgrades, lounge access, hotel room upgrades, resort credits giving excellent food, and so much more. In addition to travel, I'm accumulating thousands of dollars in cash back every few weeks. Before starting with miles and points, I wouldn't travel often, but now my lifestyle is greatly elevated, again countering Dave's narrative. Last month, my round-trip flight and hotel stay was covered for a Texas trip. I had a great opportunity to play on a live stream poker game, quite a chance to improve my play, and of course, make money. Miles and points easily saved me over $1,000 on just this one trip. Earlier this month, I had to send my car in for repairs, so I flew to Las Vegas rather than being without a car and pretty much bound to home and using Uber. 
Next month, I'm flying to Italy in round-trip first class on a flight that would have cost about $6,000, but thanks to credit card rewards, it was close to zero. More travel is on the horizon, including a comped cruise, concerts, conferences, all at next to no cost, and to top that all off, I quit traditional work, relying on what's come with miles and points. It's sad to hear people saying they can't afford to travel, or they only take one trip every few years because costs are so high, they could just join the mile and points game. Ironically, following Dave's advice will keep people out of travel and stop them from building wealth through using credit cards. The usual plan, unfortunately, can be to save cash for a vacation and then be broke or close to it after that trip. I say no to that. Let's do much better. Dave Ramsey says that no millionaire he knows got rich through using frequent flyer miles. This is a gross mischaracterization of what points and miles aficionados like myself claim. We're not saying earning Delta Sky miles got us rich. And for rich people, it's usually not just one thing. It's a combination of things in most cases, save extreme talent or chance. It's lots of hustles, triumphing after failures, taking calculated risks, a positive mindset, investing, networking, and so much more. Those airline miles, though, could easily save someone from spending on trips they were going to take anyway, and can lead to great business opportunities. Very often, I think that money saved is similar to money earned. If you were going to pay $800 for a round-trip flight, $600 for a hotel stay, but instead could reduce that to zero or close to it with miles and points, you have an extra $1,400 in your checking account. Maybe you as a business owner could also leverage 0% intro APR offers on business credit cards with credit limits around $15,000, also picking up a $500 welcome bonus. That's a good sum of money to leverage to make more money. But Dave says no and limits you to the trash that is cash while you pay full price for travel for no good reason. What a disaster. Dave Ramsey also argues that, similar to the old WWF Vince McMahon entrance music, you have no chance in hell to beat the banks because banks spend tons of money on marketing, research, and understanding human behavior. Indeed, more people may be more willing to pay with that plastic and overextend, as Ramsey says, but it doesn't have to be that way. We still have free will that Dave would preach about, I'm sure, so with some discipline, mindfulness, and strategy, we can come out ahead, especially spending money we would have spent anyway, just on new credit cards, getting big bonuses, or finding creative ways to spend without really spending. Isn't it a noble undertaking to work to overcome the odds and prevail? To have control over our faculties? Just because I can use a $15,000 credit limit doesn't mean I'm going to go wild buying $1,000 clothing from Saks off Fifth Avenue or a new expensive computer every few months from Dell, even if they allow orders to go on their website. Make purchases, pay off the credit card bill in full. Life's pretty easy, Dave. Here are some really easy ways to beat that system that Dave talks about. Sign up for personal checking accounts connecting direct deposits to get hundreds of dollars in bonuses per account. That can also lead you to credit cards as you establish relationship with banks. Have a big purchase coming up? Put it on a new credit card like the Chase Sapphire Preferred for a bonus 60,000 point welcome offer, easily worth more than $600. Don't go into debt or live on credit as Ramsey thinks you'll end up falling into a new level of the underworld. Ramsey also bizarrely suggests that a caller cancel all of his credit cards to have a quote unquote zero credit score in a YouTube clip titled Why Credit Scores Are Completely Bogus. What a disaster to suggest someone responsible, as Ramsey says, wonderfully let their credit score evaporate. And maybe to be even nitpickier, there isn't just one credit score, Dave. I suggest instead paying your balances in full so that one could have access to not only travel rewards, but also easy approval for auto loans for modest used cars, mortgage and rent clearances, and much more, rather than going into what Ramsey calls manual underwriting. Good luck with that. In other clips, Ramsey says you build credit scores by going into debt, and it's more of a debt score rather than a credit score. More misleading statements from Ramsey, of course, because one really isn't going into debt like owing money and paying interest over time if they're just paying their balances in full. In a video titled, Why Can't I Use Credit Cards If I Pay Them Off Every Month? Ramsey laments spending $1,000 on a 2% cashback card to get $20. He calls it a bad deal. But this again is missing the point. Ramsey is making it seem like we're letting someone borrow $1,000 or investing $1,000 for some time to get $20, but this isn't the case. If we're spending that $1,000 on something like auto insurance, car repairs, rent, you name it, why not get an effective $20 rebate? I pay monthly apartment rent through a payment portal. I love to use credit cards rather than mailing a physical check and getting 0% back. I'll get some rewards on that rent payment. Why not? I've been using a U.S. bank card to pay rent thanks to a special mail offer that gave me a $750 
Bonus for $4,000 in spending. Spending that I'm doing anyway. It's not extra spending, Dave. This card also gives me 0% APR for 15 months, so that's money I can invest in other things. Once that 0% APR is maxed, I can pay rent with a new card and accumulate more welcome bonuses. I'm not just conspicuously spending to get a $20 rebate like throwing my hands in the air saying, oh, I'll buy a $1,000 pair of sneakers because I can get 20 back. No thanks, I'll use discounted Adidas gift cards to buy modest sneakers. The 2% back and more, Dave Ramsey, is bonus money. We're not seeing it as a formula to get rich, as you say, but many steps toward building money with those modest sneakers add up. Ramsey also seems to lament even going on vacation as a general principle, saying meals won't be free, there are other expenses, but Dave again misses the point. With miles and points, we're dramatically reducing costs, and actually in many cases meals are free with hotel loyalty programs and benefits. Even if the meals aren't free, isn't spending something like $50 a day and not paying for hotel and airfare much better than the Ramsey plan of either not going or paying full price in cash? Dave also levies some personal attacks calling people arrogant because they actually think they're winning at the game. Dave says the banks screw with us on levels we don't realize, and even though we think we're winning, we're not. This, you may think you're winning, but you're not, is extremely suspect. We can provide evidence of how we are winning, but Dave is still rejecting it. Might Dave say, too, that even though people appear happy when they watch their favorite movie, they really aren't because the movie isn't planting some secret message in them? Jimmy at a concert of his favorite band is really deluded because even though he reports a good time, it really wasn't? We can't trust ourselves. We can't trust evidence. We can only trust Dave. Yeah, Dave. Some people are overspending and going into mountains of debt, but it's not always the case. I've had many podcast guests, Beth, Mark, Darren, Tony, Holly, Joe, Waller's Wallet, Andrew, Rod, Steven. They've all won with miles and points. I like to think that I'm smarter than the average bear wiping his behind in a Charmin commercial, but it doesn't take a super high IQ or a PhD to win at miles and points. This isn't something that just I and Jeopardy champions can do. There are many winners. Imagine Dave chatting with a prominent product reseller who buys inventory on credit, flips products for profit, hires many employees, and reports wins every year on taxes. They accumulate tons of miles and points from different credit cards. Even at a low level, a person who gets maybe a handful of credit cards a year embracing a frugal lifestyle can pick up thousands in value. What is so difficult about this, Dave? Dave and his co-host pose a false dilemma, a glaring logical fallacy here. Build wealth or build miles and points. But Dave, one can do both simultaneously. Ramsey also compares miles and points to spending $20 at Chuck E. Cheese to get a sticky hand prize, which is not even analogous. One can say the $20 exchange for 50 cents is terrible, but it's not what we're doing with miles and points. We're not just throwing away $19.50. Dave, what about the entertainment factor too, in your example? Maybe little Jimmy might have a great time with his dad playing games and that sticky hand thing is just a bonus at the end. Or maybe he just plays the games and leaves. Who cares? I spent $40 to play a video game I played for 200 hours. I got $0 at the end. But was my effort a fail too? Are you just lamenting entertainment here? Should we just forsake all entertainment because we spent money and didn't get the same money or money back at the end? It's just so bad with Dave. It's laughable here. Ramsey also laments blackout dates with points and miles and certain locations, quote unquote, not being on the list. This again shows that Dave knows very little about reward redemptions and credit card rewards in general. Many credit card rewards are flexible currencies that aren't tied to one specific carrier, and the points can also be cashed out for cash, as I explained in my previous episode about the new American Express business checking account. Dave says he can save money and go wherever he wants. So can I, and I'm doing it much better. So far, I've been able to go where I wanted to go with miles and points, every time. Hawaii, Greece, New Orleans, Vegas, Seattle, New Mexico, Washington, D.C., Detroit. If for whatever reason you can't be responsible with credit, it can make sense, I must admit, to avoid credit. Hang a picture of Dave Ramsey on your wall. However, to wholly lament credit and think that anyone using credit is eternally lost is Ramsey's big mistake. Imagine me shouting that alcohol is terrible for everyone because some drunk driving occurs, because some are alcoholics... And if you think you're responsible with alcohol, you're really not. You're deluding yourself. Ramsey, when talking about credit and debt, is very much like a prohibitionist who would argue that all alcohol is bad for everyone, even though some can actually be responsible with alcohol. I draw a lot of inspiration from the tradition of Stoic philosophy of Greece and Rome, the focus of my other podcast, the Stoic Solutions Podcast. 
Stoic thinkers often talk about how things in themselves aren't good or bad. It's how we use them. We can compromise our values in the quest of fame, riches, or things, but this doesn't have to be the case. We can, with moderation, have desires, pleasures, and luxuries, especially at no cost. Using credit and debt for your advantage isn't a bad thing if you're playing the game well. Ramsey, it seems, dislikes the banks. He wants to avoid entanglement with them. But if he's great with money as he says he is, why does he boast about having no credit cards? Even America's voice on money can't beat the system? Is Dave Ramsey hopeless like us plebs who think we are winners when we really aren't even though we've redeemed lots of miles and points on great trips? Can't Ramsey and his followers be like Robin Hood taking money from the banks? Even if Ramsey just used a handful of credit cards getting some rewards, it's better than getting 0% back in physical cash or most debit cards, and worse yet, paying fees merchants include in prices to pay for credit card processing. What a disaster to pay for credit card processing fees when you're not even using credit, and then you're paying full price for travel. It's the double failure. Ramsey and the organization Black Lives Matter are two sides of the same coin when it comes to don't trust the bank, the system is rigged against you, you're oppressed or helpless, you don't even realize it in your false consciousness with this systemically corrupt, irredeemable society. Last year, the organization Black Lives Matter called for a boycott of, quote, white-owned banks and, quote, white companies around Black Friday to end, quote, white supreme, you know what I mean, avoiding YouTube censors, capitalism. Ramsey, with his generally right-leaning politics, laments far-left politics, but Ramsey really isn't that much different with his hate for the system, discarding all the advantages that come with it, if you're smart and play the game well. Both Ramsey and BLM contribute to people's lifestyles of being paycheck to paycheck. Ramsey followers miss out on great opportunities miles and points provide. Even though I and many others share countless pictures and trip reports on social media thanks to miles, points, credit cards, and deals, some people are still skeptical. How can it work? How can the banks give so much away? As I and even Dave mentioned, some can't be responsible with credit and are in crippling debt. But it doesn't have to be that way for everyone. The banks will make money from people often carrying balances, paying interest, not using benefits, paying unnecessary fees. So we who can profit thrive, because banks are overall still making money. Dave Ramsey not only misses the point, but he and his followers miss miles and points. In many ways, Ramsey is leading the war on happiness. The average Joe who can be financially responsible has so much to gain from miles and points since making and saving a few thousands of dollars a month has more impact, I would imagine, on a middle-class individual compared to the millionaires Ramsey says he knows. Even for millionaires, why not use credit cards, especially for purchase protections, travel protections, extra cash flow, next to no cost travel, and so much more. Have the banks work for you rather than being under the clutches of the banks. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more episodes. Visit my website at hurdygurdytravel.com to contact me, find me on social media, read episode transcripts, and schedule a free credit card consultation. Support the show through Subscribestar, referral links, and buying from my eBay store. Watch the show on YouTube, where you can find bonus videos not released as podcast episodes. Listen on many podcast playing platforms. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. A Subscribestar subscription will give you special perks, including a custom podcast episode, questions answered by upcoming guests, and monthly private one-on-one conversations. Listen to my other podcast, the Stoic Solutions Podcast, found at stoicsolutionspodcast.com. My podcast guests and I offer practical wisdom for everyday life inspired by the ancient tradition of Stoic philosophy from Greece and Rome. Thanks for listening and have a great day. 